what is good fam welcome to this week in points and travel i'm your host jp buffett on this week's episode we'll be talking about the jet blue spirit merger going to trial we'll also be talking about how southwest is unveiling its new bag tracking feature and we'll be talking about how american airlines has their site on delta and united customers but first, we're going to be starting off with Mint shutting down. Now, this is fresh news to me, and I, it's going to be a bit raw. I uh, yeah. So let's back up here. So Mint uh, is uh, a uh, Mint is a website that's owned by Intuit. Intuit owns a, a suite of websites. I think uh, QuickBooks, TurboTax, um, a lot of those websites, and they bought Mint back in two thousand nine. Now, the point of Mint was to be a personal finance, basically a budgeting app, um, and Intuit bought it uh, for to go with their other suite of, of, of products. So, for me, uh, this is again, it's a very personal story. I um, started using Mint in like 2016, 2017, and I found you know at the beginning it was tough, but over time I found that this was a great app. A great website to use to actually truly track my uh, spending and finally try to get my finances under order. So it was a, a bit of a shock to me to learn, uh, basically a couple of days ago, that Intuit is basically deciding to get rid of Mint. And what they're going to try to do, and this is the crazy part, what they're going to basically do is, um, so they also own Credit Karma, and they're going to take Mint, some of the features in Mint, and they're going to move these features over to Credit Karma. Now get this though. They're moving these features over to Credit Karma, but the features they're not gonna move over to Credit Karma, or I should say the features they're gonna move right now at least, are budgeting, and um, what was the other one? Budgeting and tracking, um, sorry, back up. It's not gonna move over uh, budgeting and basically creating goals or crafting goals. And for me, that was the biggest part of Mint. I really thought that Mint was great for people who couldn't use Excel or something like that to really get down budgeting to make kind of like gamify budgeting. And I'm sure there are many other apps out there, but for me personally, Mint was great. So to see they're moving Mint over to Credit Karma and they're not taking the thing that made Mint Mint, it really rubs me the wrong way. Again, budgeting is not, mo monthly budgeting was a great feature. It's a great feature, it's not gone yet. Um, it's a great feature and they're gonna remove it. So a uh, little, little uh, catch up right up to, uh, to what's happening. On January 1st, 2024, Intuit will be getting rid of Mint. So anybody who has uh, their stuff on Mint, um, all of that will be getting tracked over to Credit Karma and um, the budgeting will not be there and the creating uh, customized categories will not be a part of that. And Intuit said that they're keeping the best features that people love about Mint. Well, I'm 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 gonna call I'm gonna call crap on that one. The be, what made Mint Mint is the fact that you had the budgeting. I've not been saying this, um, I'm re re reiterating this a lot, but it's true. You know, and when you remove that, you remove people's abilities to actually do these things. And I I get it. It's a company. They're trying to you know, it's the bottom line. They're moving things over the, over the credit karma. You can still track your trans transactions. But I think it's a bigger play to like we know what credit karma is there for. It's it's, it's there to push out you know, mortgage products to push out credit card products. And it's basically there to get people into doing things. Again, don't get me wrong. I, I think these are great. Um, I think credit cards are great. I think uh, mortgages are great, but also think that helping people learn how to budget um, and helping them to really, really find budgeting to be fun was what I really thought Mint was for, what I really enjoyed about Mint and knowing that this is gonna be gone really sucks for me. But it's not all bad. It's not all bad. Um, Mint. The, the, one of the great things about Mint is that you can take all your all of your all of your uh, data from all of your different uh, banks or uh, credit cards, wherever you have. Like in terms of like finance, uh, can be exported to um, CSV files, and you can use that on Excel or Google spreadsheets. So basically, you can still, if you have a lot of data on Mint, I advise. Excuse me. I would advise to go on Mint, take all of your transaction history, take it off of there. Um, move it over to uh, a spreadsheet or to 
um, or to uh, yeah, go over Excel spreadsheet or Google spreadsheet. And um, there are also other apps out there um, that uh, I've read uh, on like NerdWallet. I think Ask Sevy also talked about them, but um, I, I can't really verify them yet because I don't really know too much about them. But for me, I really want to get that transaction history off. I want to get all of the my budget history, history off, like what, how I budgeted certain things, where they were at. And I think that's going to be what I'm going to do moving forward. But this is the first story, Mint shutting down. Uh, into it shutting down mint and again it's not it's not a, tra a, a travel story but i think it's a point story because a lot of people credit card debt is real it's a real thing and being able to you know take care of that credit card debt i think mint has been uh, great in that in that endeavor you know even myself personally uh, i don't share about this too much but you know this is something i am uh, dealing with myself so i was using mint as a way to uh, get a hold of that and to see that's going to be gone really really sucks man it really sucks i can't really say how much it sucks it's, it's terrible um i think um if i think i think whoever's getting into the points and points and travel um you know game or getting into this into this into this world i think budgeting is huge i think being able to, to have a good budget and be able to do these things is huge and again i'm going on a rant this is starting off points and travel with a rant uh but this just came out fresh i couldn't really wrap my head around it too much um but mint is going so if you use mint really you know take all these features that you liked off uh about it off you know make sure you know exactly what the budgeting was all of these things um just so you have it ready to go but yeah that was the first story um uh, mint is gonna be gone we're gonna move on to our next story now because it's crazy but yeah let's move on to our next story Okay, so our next, for our next story now, we're gonna get back into the uh, world of points and travel. In this, we are talking about uh, the JetBlue merger with Spirit Airlines. I feel like I'm talking about a lot, JetBlue a lot the last couple of weeks. But anyways, JetBlue, um, they were part of the Northeast Alliance with American Airlines. Um, the Justice Department uh, shut that down. Um, and JetBlue was okay with that because they've been trying to get this Spirit merger going. But now the D Department of Justice is also saying that they're also suing JetBlue um, uh, and bringing up this is, would be um, uh, basically for antitrust uh, reasons. And um, yes, JetBlue has been trying to merge with Spirit Airlines for a minute now. Uh, they basically kind of like stopped the merger pretty much with uh, Frontier. Uh, and the Department of Justice is basically trying to stop this, this merger from going through. This merger, uh, if it goes through, would be about uh, $3.8 billion dollars. Um, it'll also make JetBlue uh, the fifth largest uh, air carrier um, in the United States. Um, and yeah, you know, like the last time this happened, the last time, you know, a merger like this happened um, that the Department of Justice wanted to stop was uh, the American Airlines and uh, United, United U.S. Airways uh, merger. So this is pretty unprecedented. I think that this is one that I don't think the last one even go to trial. The American Airlines and the uh, U.S. Airways that one didn't even go to trial. So the fact this is going to trial, and uh, the fact that JetBlue thinks they have a good case, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, so the, the the Department of Justice's case is that JetBlue, um, the merger with Spirit Airlines, will remove a a, a low cost option and it will, it will send prices up. Which, I mean, I I don't I don't buy this. I don't. <sighs> I, I get it. Spirit is a very low cost airline. I get that. Um, but mind you, 80% of the U.S. market is controlled by four companies. Delta, American Airlines, United, and Southwest. 80%. You know, you have Alaska, JetBlue, Spirit, uh, Frontier. That's, that's 20%. Right? So I don't really think, you know, you also have Breeze, you also have all these other uh, low budget airlines. So I don't think that doing this is going to uh, increase uh, consumer prices. I think also it might actually decrease. You have another player in there, like JetBlue, that's not, you know, again, I, I again, uh, full disclosure, I do like flying JetBlue. Uh, it would be great, you know, if it had, you know, more of a West Coast presence. But anyways, like, I don't think it's going to move prices up as like the uh, Department of Justice is saying. Um, not many people even fly Spirit that much. Actually, Spirit is like, I mean, no, I shouldn't say that. I don't know how many people fly Spirit. I should not say not a lot of people fly it. It's a great budget airline. Frontier will still be there. I think you also have Breeze Airways. But to say that, that the consumer prices will go up just because Spirit is going, I, I just don't think that's that's the case. I think it's reaching, honestly. Um, uh, they said... Uh, that they will lose representation um, in smaller cities, um, though that might be true. But again, there's Breeze Airways. I think 
um, that Breeze Airways is actually uh, covering a lot of uh, small airlines or small uh, locations, though this might be a point where in terms of like prices going up, because if Breeze is the only one you can choose, you know, or Frontier in certain places is the only you can choose, that might actually increase prices in those areas. So I can actually understand uh, where they're coming from with that. But JetBlue says that this actually um, brings more competition and allows for greater um, uh, play against the big four. Excuse me. And those big four I was talking about, again, were uh, Delta, American Airlines, United, and uh, Southwest. Um, and, you know, in, in, in JetBlue, you know, the thing that they're really looking for is not really Spirit Airlines as a product, but more so the airplanes and the slots. So this is something I've been learning about a lot more recently. The fact that like you only have so many certain slots at airports. So if an airline wants to get those slots organically, they really have to like go through a lot of like building for that. But another way to do that is through mergers. So if they merge with uh, Spirit Airlines, they get the planes, they get the slots that Spirit has, and you know that you know allows them to have more of a, a market share in these areas, more of a presence in these areas. Um, and the Department of Justice also is also saying that like they have a lot of you know uh, locations in in the Northeast. So JetBlue has a lot of like uh, coverage in the Northeast. They have to get rid of some of those slots, which is something JetBlue said they want to do. But the Department of Justice uh, they were not um, buying that. And a little bit of last thing on this on this story, um, they they said earlier how well I said earlier how the Department of Justice said like this would reduce um, competition. Well, if you get rid of a low cost option like Spirit, well, <laughs> Spirit's actually um, had had to basically cut back staffing because there's reduced demand for flying Spirit. So if you know this is an issue, if you know like you know like getting rid of Spirit or adding these two merge is an issue, like if Spirit was actually having an increased or high demand and a lot of people were to fly them, I would see that issue at, 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 at point. But the fact that they don't, I just can't get behind it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. But we'll see what happens with this story. Um, I will keep following it. The trial is, uh, is is getting ready to start, so we'll see what happens and see if JetBlue is actually able to merge with Spirit and have more of a East Coast West Coast um, footprint. But yeah, with that, we're gonna move on to our next story. So our next story is going to be kind of a quick one. Uh, this story is talking about Southwest Airlines. So Southwest Airlines is um, giving their passengers a little more peace of mind. They've um, finally caught up with American Airlines, Delta, and United by allowing for tracking um, of the check bags in some way. Now, um, it's a nice feature to have. Um, it gives people peace of mind. I personally, again, I, like I say every time, I would prefer to just have a carry-on. If somebody says, hey, do you want to check a bag? You want to check the carry-on? I do not. Um, but it, it does it does give me a peace of mind when I'm able to just say, hey, this is where my bag is. This is where it's at. Though I will say, though, there's been times where I've flown Delta and uh, they said their bag is still on the plane, your bag is still somewhere else, and my bag was actually at the, at the uh, car uh, baggage carousel. So it's not 100 uh, foolproof. But this is something that, that uh, a nice feature that Southwest is adding. Um, mixed emotions. Some people are still just like mad because they couldn't get somewhere in time. Um, oh yeah, back up. Uh, South Southwest uh, put this out on Twitter, and the internet was the internet, so people were mad. It was like, oh, you know, why can't you know? Yeah, that's great and all. Why can't you like actually, you know, get me somewhere on time? But there, most 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 uh, people were positive about it. And I think it's a pretty good feature to have. And um, if you want, if you fly Southwest and you want to check a bag. I think this is a great uh, option for you. So yeah, check it out. Um, you can get it in the app. I think it's also on the website. Pretty cool feature. But with that, we're now gonna move on to our next story. So the final story up on today's episode of This Week in Points in Travel will be American Airlines eyeing Deltas and United's top customers. And by this, they're talking about people who have top level status being Platinum uh, or even diamond status or one K status. You're talking about United. So, so uh, you know, for a limit, they say for a limited time, American is introducing a special uh, status match challenge through an instant status uh, pass pr uh, promotion for select members of certain other loyalty programs. 
uh, the loyalty programs talking about Delta and United. And they're basically going to, they're not just talking about any uh, level of stats, so it can't just be like silver medallion stats. They're talking about the Delta Platinum medallion stats and the United Premier Platinum status will be matched to the American Premier Pro uh, sorry, American Pro, uh, plat sorry, American Platinum Pro stats. Third time's a charm. Um, wow, that's a lot of platinum. I feel like everybody wants to be a platinum. It's always a platinum something. But anyways, um, you can uh, uh, transfer, uh, sorry, transfer these tiers uh, up to four months. So basically to the end of 2023 and maybe into January. And and for Delta, and they also uh, go for the Delta, Delta's and uh, United's top tier status being the Diamond Medallion and the uh, United uh, Premier K, uh, sorry, Premier 1K uh, status will be matched to American Executive Platinum status. Uh, American Executive Platinum status. Jesus Christ. That is a very imaginative name. You have American Platinum Pro and you got American Executive Platinum. Jesus, that is terrible. But, anyways, I'm, gonna, I'm getting sidetracked. They are extending this uh, to people who have this stats with Delta and United. If you if this is you and you want to fly uh, American, get some stats for a little while, by all means, take it. Um, they said it's going to extend up to a year. It can extend up to a year um, at a reduced cost. So American is pretty much similar to Delta in this, in this regard where um, it's basically depending on the amount of money you spend. So in normal times to get executive, uh, sorry, to get um, platinum pro status, you would need to, uh, to have 125,000 miles or starting to like thousand loyalty points. And one loyalty point is uh, is equal to basically $1 spent. So, you know, I, I think I think that's uh, the, the, the exchange, I believe. Um, but it's a lot basically to get to that type of status and for the executive i think it's two hundred thousand uh, loyalty points but you know if this is something you want to go for uh i think you should look into it i don't have stats with any of these guys and at the moment i'm not looking to get that i don't think i can even try to get it but it is there if you want it but yeah that is it for this episode if you liked it please leave a review if you're watching this on youtube please leave a like and of course guys until next time Peace.